starts right now. Your top stories right now. Fire breaks out at a north side apartment overnight. We have details. Plus, why people across the U.S. could see the pace of their mail delivery slow down as early as tomorrow. Well, it looks like the showers and storms kind of fizzled out last night. There is a little drizzle here or there this morning. And also, a few breaks in the clouds. I saw a smiley face crescent moon on my way to work. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is last day of the month, September 30th. That's right. Last day of September, October already tomorrow. Um, and yes, humid, though. Today doesn't feel like fall. Not at all. Mike, you have your pumpkins ready yet? No, no. Yet. When do you normally put up the spider contraption on your house? Uh, that would be tomorrow, but that probably won't happen tomorrow. Ah, yeah, see, I knew it, you so. were getting close. Yeah. Anyway, and you know, I saw, I didn't see the moon this morning. It's a little bit of mist mm -hmm. on the windshield. So, and we do have a couple of showers way down to the southeast uh, this morning, and it's a whole different story, obviously, than what we had at this time yesterday. Temperatures are way up about, uh, on average, 10 degrees above normal. 78 at Stinson, 77 Castroville, 75 at the airport. And yes, as Stephanie was talking about, it is humid out there, and these dew points are well up into the upper 60s and low 70s. I mean, 75, Pleasanton and Stinson, Castroville as well, which means it's kind of fog up your glasses kind of humidity. Here's uh, some of the showers, and this is just clutter around the radar site there. There may be, like I said, uh, uh, one or two little sprinkly showers here and there, but we do have some down along the coast, and those will continue to try and work their way a little further inland uh, later on this morning and this afternoon. Then we're going to be seeing out to the west the line of showers and thunderstorms developing later on this afternoon going into tonight, and that's what's setting the stage for a morning tomorrow, kind of like what we had yesterday morning. First of all, mold is on the high side, and that's probably going to be staying high the next couple of days. Fall elm is moderate. Ragweed is low. This morning, temperatures are going to be just about steady right around mid 70s don't need a jacket keep your umbrella handy uh, like i said most of the rain is going to be down to the southeast this morning other than that little bit of mist so some damp spots on the roads and then after school today 90 a couple of stray storms here and there and then we'll be watching more storms later on tonight lining about to the west how long is this rain going to last and we do have another front moving on through here later on next week what's it going to do with temperatures details coming up in just a couple of minutes stuff mark Mike, thank you. New this morning, fire broke out at an apartment complex just north of the downtown area overnight. Fire investigators say it happened just after 10 p.m. in the 300 block of West Laurel. They say a fire broke out inside the wall between the first and second story next to the stairs of the building. Firefighters were able to arrive quickly and put the flames out. People living in three apartments were displaced for the night. A dog was also rescued. No one was hurt. Investigators are still trying to figure out the cause of the fire. This morning, there's some changes coming in the U.S. mail. As ABC's Andrea Fujii explains, a slowdown is on the way. They already call mail snail mail. Snail mail is about to get slower. Beginning tomorrow, the Postal Service will adopt new standards that will delay delivery times for some mail. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy previously announced the changes to save billions of dollars. We are not structured properly, and we have fallen out of step with the marketplace we serve. The changes mean some first-class mail, along with magazines, flyers, and other periodicals, will arrive later, especially if traveling a long distance. The current one- to three-day delivery service will lengthen to one- to five days. Add to that the current pandemic-related delivery delays, and critics aren't happy. Medical shipments have gone missing. Many small businesses cannot get their products to customers. And people are getting hit with late fees for bill payments that did not arrive on time because of mail delivery delays. Under this new plan, first class package deliveries are not expected to be affected. They include most medications and food deliveries. But beginning this Sunday, it will cost you more to send commercial and retail packages. The higher prices are expected to last through Christmas. The mail is already slow, that is slowing up worse. A lot of people depend on the mail, a lot of people need the mail. So I think that'll be not a good thing. Some post offices will also see reduced hours. Postmaster General DeJoy, a Trump appointee, has already come under fire for slower mail delivery around the election and during the holiday season last year. But supporters are praising his plans to upgrade mail processing equipment and technology, even with the Postal Service mired in $161 billion in debt. As for the changes taking effect tomorrow, people sending first-class mail are being warned to plan ahead. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York.
The U.S. Senate and House are poised to approve legislation today that would keep the federal government running into early December. Today, lawmakers also set to vote on the president's widely touted $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. But that vote may be postponed without a deal on a larger $3.5 trillion measure for social programs. There's also a fight over the nation's debt limit not raised by October 18th. The country would likely face a financial crisis and economic recession. One of the most active volcanoes on Earth is erupting on Hawaii's Big Island for the first time since May. Officials with the U.S. Geological Survey confirmed late yesterday that an eruption has begun in the Kilauea volcano. The eruption is not in an area with homes and is entirely contained within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Kilauea had a major eruption in 2018 that destroyed more than 700 homes and displaced thousands of residents. Before that eruption, the volcano had been slowly erupting for decades, but mostly not not in densely populated residential areas. Scientists say this time all signs indicate that it will stay within the crater at the top of the volcano. In Dallas, authorities say eight people were injured, including four firefighters in an apartment complex explosion. Dallas Fire and Rescue says three firefighters were badly hurt yesterday, while the other was treated for minor injuries. Fire officials say the firefighters were investigating a report of natural gas uh, leak at a two-story complex in South Dallas. They had reported smelling gas just before the explosion partially collapsed that building. And time now is 436 and it's about 75 degrees out there. Ready to switch to an online only bank. We'll tell you some of the downsides and upsides before you do. A pl plus a look at what will set the San Antonio Spurs apart as we get closer to the first preseason game. And an update on that next round of showers and storms in Mike's forecast. And what is the weekend looking like? And he also just dropped some truth on us that we've got another cold front headed this way. We'll find out what that means coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs have completed day three of their 2021 training camp. Great to see the guys back. as They try to integrate as many as eight new faces into this squad, but there is a familiar face returning to the silver and black, and that is Mr. Bryn Forbes. Bryn won his first NBA championship with Milwaukee last season, was given the opportunity to return to SA, where he spent four seasons with San Antonio before signing as a free agent with the Bucks. Honestly, it kind of happened out of nowhere. You know, um, they had they had offered me, and and, and um, they had uh, I had a few other teams that I was looking at. But you know, there's there's a lot of things that went into this decision. But you know, playing for this organization and playing for for, for Pop and with these guys again was was big for me. You know, it was, it was, it was something I really wanted to do. Good to have you back, Bren. Spurs free, pre, first rather preseason game is set for Monday against the Jazz at 7.30, and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. UTSA Roadrunners have had to battle Mother Nature before facing winless UNLV this Saturday at the Dome. That's because lightning delayed practice yesterday. Roadrunners preparing to match their best start in school history at 5-0. One of the questions for the team will be the big comeback against Memphis earlier this season, helping them go forward. I think that was our biggest um, adversity that we hit all year and knowing that um, we could hit adversity and still come back together and not break apart like we have previously and keep that on to go on and overcome that is a great thing. Were you happy with that? I was so happy, man. I mean, I had challenged our defense. Um, I stood up in front of the defense on Wednesday and asked them, you know, let's really travel, you know, and have a physical and mental toughness. Let's really bring that um, because we will need it. Um, I looked over the offense and they, they, those guys make a lot of plays. Um, and I knew we'll face some adversity and I knew they'll get some. So um, just how we would respond to it was the big question mark. And um, I, I was really excited to see how we responded. The extension of UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer's contract by one year has flown under the radar till now. His original five-year deal called for a base salary of $800,000 in year one with incentives for wins and bowl games. That's confirmed by the coach to be a six-year deal. Congratulations to the Marion High School Bulldogs who have started their football season 5-0 for the first time in school history. That dates back to 1968, folks, and includes 1-0 in district with their big 56 to nothing win over Lytle. Their biggest challenge so far this season was against Honda, where they pulled out a 35-31 victory. Bulldogs have moved up to number two in 12's top 12 ranking. Now the team is setting its sights on Jurdenton this Friday night as part of our big game coverage road trip. Look for that. 
I think it's really great that uh, us as a team can come together, especially from last year. We were we were a young team, and this year we're senior heavy, and it's a really special thing that we're doing here, practicing hard, playing hard, doing great things. Came off a little bit of a tough year last year, but um, uh, we had played some good teams in non-district. I think it really got us ready for um, for our district, and went 1-0 last week in district, and we're getting ready for Jordanton. Yeah, Marion travels to Jordanton Friday night. Kickoff set for 7.30, and that's a look at morning sports. And time now is 4.43 and about 75 degrees out there. Still ahead, more online-only banks are popping up, and they might seem convenient, but they could be a hassle when you actually need someone to help. And next, celebrations across the free uh, from the Free Britney movement. What happens next now that Britney Spears has won a big part of her conservatorship case? And welcome back. It's 445. A judge has suspended Britney Spears' father from her conservatorship but did not terminate it entirely. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, celebrations from across the Free Britney movement. After more than 13 years, a Los Angeles judge ending Jamie Spears' control over his daughter's life, suspending him as her conservator effective immediately. Britney Spears has been faced with a decade-long nightmare, a Kafkaesque nightmare, orchestrated by her father and others. And she's so pleased and she's so thankful to all of you. But the court didn't go so far as to dissolve the conservatorship completely, at least not just yet. Instead, appointing a temporary conservator recommended by Britney's legal team to replace Jamie. Britney's attorney asking the judge for an orderly transition, then termination of the conservatorship entirely later this fall. And we'll be live outside the courthouse with the very latest coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. 447, should you use banks that are online only? They could be a popular alternative to typical branches offering things like no overdraft fees. However, as 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris reports, there can be a frustrating downside. Zero fees, early pay options, and higher interest rates. It's no wonder many people are opening online-only bank accounts. Online banks can be attractive options. But Consumer Reports' Octavio Blanco says there can be drawbacks, especially when you need help. If you need help, reaching an actual human at the company to help you may not be easy. So to get an issue resolved, you might have to get creative. Try to find the company's main number online and ask to speak to the office of the CEO. Explain your situation clearly and remember to be nice, no matter how frustrated or angry you might get. Another way to get attention? Social media. Send a direct message to the company on Twitter instead of a public tweet. Give the company a chance to fix the problem before you make a scene publicly. They may appreciate that and it may give you a quicker and more helpful response. Chime, the biggest online only bank, says the company plans to offer full 24 seven customer service. If you're still having trouble contacting someone, you can file a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And if you think you've gotten bad service, report it to the Better Business Bureau. But even before you choose a banking service, do some checking to see what other customers are saying. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, it's 448, and don't forget, if you'd like to submit KSAT Connect pictures, the easiest way to do it is on our Weather Authority app. There's a little button at the bottom of the camera, and you just hit pins, and then boop. We get a lot of good ones. We do, yeah. and here's another one. Yep, and this is from the other night when we had all those uh, thunderstorms out there, and probably going to be, you know, hit, get the cameras ready. Do it inside. If there's ever lightning, don't stand out there, even though it may be off in the distance or something like that. But, uh, yeah, a lot of folks, and also this is a great way to help us tell the story of what's going on, and there's going to be potentially a lot going on later on tonight and early tomorrow morning. But boy, oh boy, that was a light show and a half. Great picture. Thank you very much for that one. It's fairly tranquil out there right now. We might have a little mist. I saw Mark was talking about some. I saw a little bit on the windshield coming into work this morning, so the roads could be kind of damp. We do have a few showers down here uh, along the coastal plain. Some are moving in and these will continue to try and work their way inland throughout the rest of the morning. A couple of showers mainly down to the southeast. And as far as the humidity, yeah, it's even more humid than what it was. These dew points are up even compared to yesterday morning, and it's going to stay pretty humid throughout the day. So we will have definitely a heat index to deal with. Temperatures are going to be above normal again. We're going to be up to about 90. 
should be in the about mid upper 80s right now and humidity continues to stick around tomorrow. And of course, all this moisture in the atmosphere is going to be feeding potentially some heavy downpours. So here's what it looks like with the uh, computer models. A couple of scattered showers, you know, here and there, a little bit of mist this morning and this afternoon we'll continue to see a few of those here and you know, again here and there 30 percent chance for some rain a couple of them down along the coastal plain and then out to the west as we go into the evening hours we start to see and this looks almost like a deja vu to uh, the other night with those uh, showers and thunderstorms developing out there to the west. They will continue uh, probably form up into those nighttime storm complexes that like to live in the overnight hours and move through about this time tomorrow morning and then throughout the afternoon. Now, as far as what happens the, in the afternoon and evening tomorrow, it is dependent upon what happens overnight. Think about yesterday. We had all of those heavy showers and thunderstorms in the overnight hours, and it kind of beats up the atmosphere, kind of works it over. So if we have a lot of storms early in the morning, then things will be or can be a little calmer later on in the afternoon going into the evening hours. So that would bode well, obviously, for football games tomorrow night. If we don't get as many of the storms, in the overnight hours probably have a better chance of seeing some Friday night. So that's still just one of those situations we're going to have to keep an eye on for tomorrow. But then we do have more showers and thunderstorms in the forecast for Saturday. And also the problem that we're going to be dealing with overnight tonight and going into Saturday is the fact that the ground is pretty saturated in a lot of spots from all the rain that we just had. So runoff and potential flooding is going to be a threat. 85 degrees today at noon, most of the cloudy skies and then a high temperature later on today up to 90, uh, mostly partly cloudy mixture sunshine and clouds uh, a couple of stray showers thunderstorms around the area and then overnight into tomorrow morning we are looking at some of those stronger storms and then also in with potentially heavy rain then also uh, into friday and saturday more rain leftovers on sunday as far as a front coming through next week it won't be a real big shot of cold air but we will see some lower humidity so that will be nice also well out to the west there is the uh, very small chance that some of those storms could be on the strong to severe side. That would be later on tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. To watch out for. All right. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Mike. Mike. 452, about 75 degrees. And still ahead, a closer look at the new Adam Stanley movie, plus John Stewart back on TV in his first show since hosting The Daily Show. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3075, Fireball 8. Your daily four numbers, 8355, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 3, 7, 14, 18, 34, and Lotto, Texas, 15, 18, 21, 22, 31, 32. And your Powerball numbers, 2, 7, 11, 17, 32, Powerball 11, Power Play 3. Good luck. The Academy Museum of Motion Pictures opens today, and the Adams family is going on a road trip. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The Rosebud Sled from Citizen Kane, Spike Lee's Oscar outfit, and Oscars, Bruce Lee's Nunchucks. Just a few of the pieces of movie history you'll be able to see at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, a first-of-its-kind museum which opens today in Los Angeles. And assistant curator Raul Guzman tells me that's not all. The Wizard of Oz exhibition I think is going to be popular. Um, we are able to really showcase our iconic pair of the ruby slippers. The Long in the Works Museum from the organization that puts on the Oscars is expected to become a big new tourist attraction. The Adams what? family is going on a road trip. This is cruel, even for you. In the animated adventure Adams Family 2, and Nick Kroll, who voices Uncle Fester, tells me he has fond memories of road trips from when he was a kid. Your dad putting his hand into the backseat to grab a knee um, when he's heard my me do like annoying voices for hour number five. Or little did he know that I would figure out a way to monetize those annoying voices into a career. Adam's Family 2 out tomorrow in theaters and on demand. This is what I look like now. Out today, Jon Stewart is back on TV in his first show since hosting The Daily Show. The problem with Jon Stewart, out today on Apple TV+. Plus. Why would I go back to a visual medium? I could have done a podcast. And happy birthday today to Kieran Culkin. The Succession star is 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457, and it's about 75 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA's Congress works to avoid a government shutdown. Lawmakers took a time out overnight for one of Washington's few remaining bipartisan traditions, the annual congressional baseball game. 
And Google is expanding shopping searches with new tools. We're going to tell you how they work coming up in Tech Bytes. Stephen Cavazos is here, just uh, walked into the studio, and he has live updates coming up all morning long, beginning at the top of the hour. Right now, light traffic at 281 in Hildebrand and Highway 90 at Nogalitos. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news right now. Possible street racing leads to a serious head-on collision on San Antonio's northwest side. Details coming up. A big battle for the Biden agenda playing out on Capitol Hill today. Lawmakers spending last night negotiating on a baseball diamond. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, all that rain has kind of ended, at least for now, and we're starting off today pretty humid. Mike says more storms are on the way later. Good morning, everybody. Last day of the month. It is Thursday, the 30th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, looking forward to more rain, actually. Yes, we uh, could have a repeat performance uh, considering the timing of these storms, right, Mike? Yeah, tomorrow morning could be a repeat of what we had yesterday morning. And the problem this time around, yes, more rain is welcome. But now with the ground pretty saturated from uh, Tuesday night's rain into yesterday morning, uh, it's uh, a lot of it's going to run off. And so therefore, I'm going into Friday and Saturday, uh, you know, runoff and flooding may be an issue. 75 degrees right now. It is very warm. It is very humid out there. I saw a couple of little just some mist on the windshield this morning, so roads could be damp in places. 90 for a high temperature today, and we will have a few showers and thunderstorms developing this afternoon, just kind of scattered about the area. Obviously, we didn't have much yesterday, but there will be more around today, and then also we'll be watching well out to the west, one of those uh, big lines of storms developing late this afternoon into this evening. The aquifer did benefit from yesterday or Tuesday night's rain up one foot uh, on yesterday's reading, which is great news. Mold is high. It's going to be staying high the next couple of days. Fall down moderate and ragweed is on the low side. So we already have a couple of showers down to the southeast and those will continue to try and work their way further inland. Uh, so we'll be watching those obviously throughout the rest of the morning. A couple of those showers, a few of them down to the southeast throughout the rest of the morning. Other than that a little bit of mist that I, like I said, saw here in town earlier today. Warm and humid this morning. A couple of showers down to the southeast. Then later on this afternoon, uh, stray showers, thunderstorms, about a 30% chance for some rain today. It is going to be warm. We'll be up around 90, so we are going to be on the above normal side. There's still going to be some humidity out there. And then overnight and into tomorrow, there will be some storms and Again, what we're looking at is another one of those lines of heavy uh, thunderstorms, potentially severe out to the west with some heavy rain overnight into tomorrow morning. Then throughout the day, now of course, a lot of what happens tomorrow during the day is dependent on what happens tonight. So that's kind of an if then situation, but we still have more rain than going into Saturday. It will be ending on Sunday. We've got some drier air coming in here next week, but we got to get through these next couple of rounds of rain. First of all, more details coming up in just a couple of minutes. And it's the first weekend of October, if you can believe. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, you know, all that rain yesterday obviously caused a lot of problems out on the roads, almost like a domino effect. But right now, things are pretty dry as we see some drivers just getting out there this morning. Let's take a look around town, see how things are shaping up so far. 35 at Evans shows pretty light traffic in some of these shots. US 90 at 410, pretty quiet there. But uh, there was an overnight crash that did happen out in the same spot where we saw an 8 18 wheeler rollover yesterday. It's right there off I 35 southbound at New Laredo Highway. It was just cleared from the trans guide shot a few moments ago, uh, but obviously the uh, drivers are going to want to still be careful when they're heading out this morning. I uh, understand that this happened on the frontage road lanes again near I 35 southbound at New Laredo Highway. Yesterday was a big problem spot. If you recall that 18 wheeler led to some big delays because Texas had to close the highway so they can get things moving once again. So once as we take a big look outside at the map, though, things are shaped up so far to still look pretty green on the screen 410 and 1604. Things are pretty quiet there, even on 35 coming in from New Braunfels. So as you bring you to those inbound times, if you plan on traveling to San Antonio here in the next few moments, good news is it's still very green across the board. You don't need to rush out the door to get to where you need to be right now. We're not seeing any issues as you can see 26 minutes right now from I 10 and Bernie 25 minutes coming in from 281 and Bolverde and 25 coming in from 35 and New Braunfels taking one last look at transit 35 1000 Oak there was some construction going on out there. Looks like that has since wrapped up more construction spots that you need to be on the lookout for coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen.
New this morning, San Antonio police say, say at least two people are in serious condition after a head on crash overnight. It happened just before midnight on the city's northwest side at the intersection of Prue Road and Kyle Seal Parkway, just east of Bandera. Now, police say the two vehicles were speeding at the time of the crash. Officers say one was possibly in the wrong lane, racing the other vehicle when it collided head on with another car. No other injuries were reported. Today, a critical day on Capitol Hill for President Biden and his ambitious agenda. As lawmakers face a government shutdown, tense negotiations are happening in Washington over both two key bills. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Um. Ahead of perhaps the most critical votes of the Biden administration, baseball, ice cream and politics all converging in Washington. Intense negotiations during last night's congressional baseball game, just hours before a potential government shutdown and a crucial infrastructure bill vote. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in the dugout on the phone, and President Biden seen visiting with Democrats and Republicans. The game, a warm up for the big showdown later today. Lawmakers expected to first vote on funding to avoid a government shutdown. They reached a deal overnight and will vote today. That will supply the, 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 the result that we all expect, which is to keep the lights on. The House also scheduled to vote on President Biden's $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package. It's already passed the Senate and would create an estimated 500,000 jobs, rebuild the nation's roads and bridges, and expand rural broadband internet. I'm a hard no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm an absolute no. House progressives threatening to vote no unless Congress passes a separate three and a half trillion dollar package covering everything from early childhood education to funding for efforts to combat climate change. Uh, well, we take it one step at a time. Progressives are frustrated at two moderate senators who won't support the larger package. One of them, Kristen Cinema of Arizona, had three meetings at the White House in one day alone this week. The other, West Virginia's Joe Manchin, who in a statement said spending trillions on new programs was the definition of fiscal insanity and that he cannot support an all or nothing approach that ignores the brutal fiscal realities our nation faces. There's also the looming fight over the debt limit. If Congress doesn't act soon to either suspend it or raise it by October 18th, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warns the U.S. could face a recession and possible financial crisis. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, San Antonio City Council members now discussing the largest ever bond program. The five-year program expected to come in at $1.2 billion. City staff presented the council with six possible areas where the money could be used. Things like streets, municipal facilities, and more parks. New voter-approved charter change would also allow the money to be used for housing units. The city wants to preserve and produce more than 28,000 housing units over the next 10 years. The bond project would need to be set before the May election when voters will decide on it. And the search continues for this man who has many recognizable tattoos on his arms, face and neck. 21 year old Luis Angel Alvarado wanted in connection to a murder case on the southwest side of San Antonio. Police say he shot and killed 31 year old Santos Sadio at an apartment complex parking lot on Somerset Road. If you have any information on where Alvarado could be, you're asked to call San Antonio Police Department's homicide unit at 210-207-7635. 508 about 75 degrees and still ahead why YouTube is widening its ban on misinformation to all vaccines, not just COVID shots. The next why local pediatricians are saying what are saying about the possibility of the COVID vaccine being made available for younger children. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting it humid, but hopefully we'll get that payoff later today. Mike says we will expect rain. Just about 12 minutes past the hour, the FDA could be offering a Halloween treat this year if all goes according to plan. As Ursula Perry reports, the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 could be approved by October 31st. The increase in COVID complications in children is something local pediatricians say could be avoidable and recently here has been quite tragic. A couple of weeks ago, unfortunately, um, a death in a young child. Unvaccinated. No doubt. Well, the young child was unvaccinated, yes, and um, and all of the um, all of the teenagers that I have seen hospitalized with complications, um, none of them have been vaccinated. Soon, if the FDA is true to form, 
all children ages 5 through 18 will be eligible, with the data from clinical trials for children 5 through 11 now in the hands of the government, waiting for evaluation. They did use a lower dose for children, uh, for the younger children, in an effort to try to make sure that we're, you know, having the the lowest dose that is um, that is effective, but also to sort of optimize or maximize the safety of the vaccine. If it's a sufficient amount of safety, the FDA could approve, perhaps even by the end of October, offering a sweet end to a concerning time for families who have not been able to get the entire unit vaccinated. Still, there's been hesitancy in older teenagers who we now know do get a rougher form of the virus than first thought. With this Delta variant surge, we're seeing a lot more children, um, a lot more teenagers. Vaccine clinics for adolescents who are 12 and older are in full swing while the FDA considers the data for that younger age group. But in the meantime, pediatricians want to make sure that you make appointments for all the vaccinations you may have missed during the pandemic, stressing your children can get all of those vaccinations at the same time they get their COVID shot. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 news and time now is 514 it's about 75 degrees out there still ahead a look at how google is making shopping just a little easier with new search tools also next see the faces of ancient egyptian mummies recreated by using their dna to run a growing business is to be on a journey and along the ride you'll have many questions challenges and a few surprises. But wherever you are on your journey, your Dell Technologies advisor is here for you with the right tech solutions so you can stop at nothing for your customers. If you can choose to be kind to your body with this bar made with almonds, imagine what other kind choices you can make. World peace has finally been achieved. But I'm just going to Milwaukee. Or you could start by doing something small. Live kind. I recommend NatureMade vitamins because I trust their quality. They were the first to be verified by USP, an independent organization that sets strict quality and purity standards. NatureMade, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. In today's Tech Bites, YouTube is broadening its ban on misinformation about vaccines. YouTube says it will now remove anti-vaccine content containing false claims about all vaccines, not just the COVID shots. Popular anti-vax influencers have already been booted from the site as part of the crackdown. Google is offering new search tools to make shopping from home easier. Users will soon have use of a button on Google Lens to find products in almost any picture posted online. Google says it will be similar to the experience of browsing in a brick and mortar store. Finally, new technology is giving scientists a glimpse into what ancient Egyptians look like. A company is using DNA from mummies in a process called phenotyping, which predicts someone's physical characteristics based on the genetic data. So much for keeping things under wraps. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 518 on your Thursday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, at least on these cameras, it looked like things were okay right now. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Let's hope we don't jinx that uh, stuff. As we take a look right now, the shots of trans guy do show pretty quiet morning. Very different from yesterday. If you remember, there was a bunch of issues out there on the roadways, but right now drivers aren't going to experience any problems, at least at this half hour. As we take a look at some of these shots, Luke 410 at Jackson Keller, uh, Luke 410 and even at Ingram. We have lots of light traffic this morning, so plenty of time to grab that cup of coffee and really just maybe enjoy the road trip to work this morning. But uh, let's talk about the weekend and as we get a little bit closer, Closer, things that you can expect over the next few days, because who doesn't want to talk about the weekend? Uh, what we're at tonight, though, before we get into the weekend, we do have some bridge work that you can expect happening from nine in the evening to five in the morning. Uh, this is going to lead to a single westbound main lane closure from Greytown Road to Loop 1604 near I-10, going out towards Seguin or going coming back from Seguin. So, just again, keep this on your radar. It should be wrapping up by Friday, but now that we can talk about the weekend, some construction to be to be on the lookout for is going to be going on here. Uh, some bridge work again happening 
on Saturday, October 2nd from 5 in the morning to 8 in the morning or 5 in the morning. That is to 8 in the evening. It's going to lead to a full closure of the northbound main lanes at State Highway 151. Uh, traffic will be directed onto the frontage road, but this is a single day construction project that's going to be going on out there. So again, mark your calendars for those projects that are going to be going on over the next few days as we get closer to the weekend. Uh, but right now the map does show that we've been off to a pretty good Thursday morning here in the Alamo City and some of our outlying areas. But one last look at trans guy, just lots of light traffic right now. Make sure that you're keeping your eyes on the road. We'll be watching things closely here as well, guys. Don't forget to dump out your rain gauge. Mike says it may get a refill. Yeah, uh, more than likely. And a lot of folks, you know, saw, saw a lot of, you know, say one, two inch rainfall amounts. Mm -hmm. Then there were the heavier rainfall totals like this one over there by Seguin, about uh, three and a half inches. And, you know, some parts of town even picked up about three to four inches of rain. Yes, very good news. Now the ground is pretty saturated, and so any more rain is not really going to be soaking in all that much. So once we get into, especially overnight tonight and then tomorrow into Saturday with a couple more waves of rain, runoff and flooding may become a concern. Right now, as Stephen was talking about, it is pretty tranquil out there. I did see a little mist on the windshield coming into work this morning. This is just some clutter around the radar site. Nothing is being picked up here in town as of right now. We may see a little sprinkle or two, but we are seeing a couple of showers down here to the southeast, and these will continue to try and work their way further inland throughout the day. And again, computer model, um, not much as far as rain today. A couple of scattered showers, thunderstorms, few of those coming in here from the southeast. And then as we get into dinner time and this evening, we've got to watch that uh, band of showers and thunderstorms trying to develop out to the west, and it may form up into, a, again, one of those kind of nighttime storm complexes like we had Tuesday night into yesterday morning and then come through. Now, some computer models aren't as bullish with the rain moving on in here. Others are more uh, bullish as far as having the cluster of thunderstorms coming in tomorrow morning. If that happens, the atmosphere is going to get worked over. Then we wouldn't have as much throughout the day. This model has more or less, I should say, overnight, but then more tomorrow afternoon, evening hours, and then we'll still have more rain around here going into Saturday. Also, later on this afternoon into tonight, some of those thunderstorms could be on the strong to potentially severe side, so there is the marginal to slight risk in our western counties. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats, and of course, there were some of those uh, severe storms late Tuesday night, early yesterday morning. They didn't last all that long, but some did become strong, and obviously we did have some of those heavy downpours, and there is the threat for heavy rain as well. Like I said, now that the ground saturated, runoff, potential flooding, that's going to be an issue. 85 degrees today at noon, most of the cloudy skies. We'll have a couple of uh, showers around, especially down to the southeast, and then scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up later on today. 90 for high temperature. It is going to be humid, so we'll have a heat index to deal with. And then we're looking at more showers, thunderstorms overnight. And then again, what happens during the day tomorrow and maybe tomorrow night is really dependent upon what happens tonight. So that is kind of an if then situation. Then we're going to have more rain into Saturday and potentially some heavy rain Sunday. Leftover showers early will start to clear out then. Good looking start to next week and also some drier air comes in here next week. So it will be more comfortable. We like the drier air. Yes, <laughs> and because we're going to we've got a lot of rain, we're going to get a lot more in the next couple of days. All right. Thank you, Mike. 523, about 75 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, Daniel Craig is set to play Macbeth on Broadway. Plus, we hear from the actress portraying Wednesday Adams in the new animated Adam Stanley movie. The current star of Hollywood's longest running franchise is taking on a role that's even older. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. I met you on new double O. She's a disarming young woman. After saying goodbye to James Bond with No Time to Die, Daniel Craig is headed to Broadway. The actor is set to star in a new production of Shakespeare's Macbeth. It will be Craig's first Broadway role in nearly a decade. Oscar nominee Ruth Negga will make her Broadway debut as Lady Macbeth. Previews begin next March. They're both growing up so fast, they wouldn't be caught dead with their parents. Wednesday Adams, voiced by Chloe Grace Moretz, gets introspective in The Adams Family 2. Really a self-identity thing of, is she an Adams? Does she feel like an Adams? You know, I think when you're coming of age, you always have that kind of 
moment where you might not feel like you fit into the family and she's definitely going through that so we really get to see her go on that journey the adams family too opens in theaters friday Casita? what's going on the magic is in danger we gotta get out of here we must protect our home we must protect our family here's your latest look at encanto about a magical house and family in colombia the animated adventure features original music from Lin-Manuel Miranda and arrives in theaters November 24th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And after waiting what it seems like 007 years, the early reviews for No Time to Die are actually pretty good. Yeah, well, maybe it was worth the wait. They yeah, worth the wait. And they said it's got a long run time, but they said it's action-packed to the very end. All right, so you have to be prepared. Yep, we're on it. We're going to check it out. 527, about 75 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA today, the Senate will vote on a stopgap bill to avert a government shutdown. But there are a number of other deadlines facing lawmakers in the weeks ahead. I'm going to tell you what you need to know about a national eviction ban being lifted as the month ends. And bringing home the bacon is getting a little tougher. Literally, why bacon prices are higher than they've been in 40 years. And ahead on GMSA at 6 later this morning, latest episode of our South Texas Crime Stories. We'll tell you about a beloved clergyman here in San Antonio held hostage for hours. Making news this morning, can lawmakers in Washington avoid a government shutdown? We'll take a look at what's causing problems. What police believe started as a street race has ended with two people in the hospital. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They were both injured in a crash. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, no rain for now, but we are expecting some today, tomorrow, and the next day. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 30th. Thanks for joining us today. It's the last day of September already. Tomorrow is October, which is one of my favorite months, so I'm excited about that. Sounds like we're going to make the transition into a new month with another round of storms, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, we're already seeing a couple of showers down along the coast mainly. I saw a little bit of uh, some mist on the windshield this morning, but yes, later on tonight and then overnight to ring in October, looks like we could see another round of sort of like what we had Tuesday night and into yesterday morning. Uh, temperature right now is very warm. We're at 75 degrees. We're about seven, eight degrees above normal. A lot of humidity with those dew points well up into the 70s. And in some areas, it's kind of that uh, fog up your glasses kind of humidity. Later on this evening, there is the chance in our western counties from Eagle Pass up toward Rock Springs for some of those storms to become strong and or severe. High winds and hail would be the, uh, the biggest threats with that. And that gets bumped up to a slight risk out there in in Western Valverde County. Again, that's going to be later on tonight as another one of those lines of storms forms up. Right now, like I said, there's nothing being picked up on radar. A little mist here and there. Down along the uh, coastal plain, we do have a few of these showers, and these are going to continue to try and build and work their way further inland. Even a couple little sprinkles maybe there along uh, 37, but those will move on in throughout the rest of the morning and try and develop and even this afternoon mold is on the high side and it's going to remain on the high side for the next couple of days given the uh, the rain in the forecast M fall elm is moderate ragweed is low and we're going to make it up to 85 again today at noon sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on about a 30 percent chance to see a couple of stray storms popping up later on this afternoon with the afternoon heating and a high temperature up to 90 and then we'll start to see more of those storms especially off to the west developing tonight what's in store for tomorrow and then going into the weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority steven cavazos so far so good so far you use the word tranquil i think a few minutes ago and i, I like that tranquil traffic right now is what we've been spotting around town uh, take a look right now a few of these shots at trans guide loop 410 at ingram it's been light traffic throughout the morning so far but in Keep in mind, it is still very early on in the morning, but we are seeing things uh, just again pretty calm right now. US 90 at Nogalitos. You can see just a few vehicles from these shots at Transguide. Very quiet in a lot of these areas. So let's go ahead and just take you to the map, show you how green it is looking there around town. 1604 to 410, 3735. We're not spotting any delays right now. It is very different from what we saw yesterday. Again, we saw a lot of traffic building in different directions as that rain came in. And unfortunately, we did see a number of crashes out there, but right now this is a very different morning and we have to say we're off to a pretty good start right now especially if you're going to be heading to san antonio in the next few moments from any of these neighboring communities uh check out uh seguin it's still pretty green on i-10 coming in with 29 minutes at this tower at this hour uh 21 minutes
minutes from Lavernia on 87 and 28 minutes coming in from Floydesville. Uh, so it's been pretty quiet start so far. We did have a crash out there toward New Laredo Highway a little bit earlier in the morning, but thankfully that has since cleared out. Just one last look around town. 1604 just shows a very quiet start in some of these shots. And again, plenty of time to head out of uh, time and grab that cup of coffee. And if you need to head to the gas station, well, we have those gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Two people are on the losing end after what San Antonio police say may have been a street race. They were both injured in a head on crash and it happened on the far northwest side on Pru Road near Kyle Seal Parkway. Katrina Weber is there with a live report and Katrina, how badly were they hurt? Well, police tell us that both of those people suffered serious injuries in that crash late last night. You can still see where they had flares set, uh, set up to shut down this road during their investigation. But based on what police tell us, this was a violent crash, a head on collision uh, just before midnight. Police say witnesses told them they saw two cars speeding down this two lane section of Prue Road here near Kyle Seal Parkway. Those cars were side by side with one of them going the wrong way in the lane. They say that wrong way car hit head on with another vehicle. One person in the wrong way car and one pe person in the other vehicle were both hurt and taken to a hospital. Now, the other car that police believe was involved in the in the race actually took off and left. Police say that uh, the two people again who were injured were in serious condition. Uh, they have not mentioned anything about charges for the person who they believe was involved in the street race. Reporting live on the far northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Time is running out on Capitol Hill. The government set to run out of funding at the end of today. And as seen as Rick Conway reports, even as lawmakers work to avert one crisis, they're looking at a number of other deadlines in the weeks ahead. Countdown to possible shutdown. Government funding expires tomorrow morning at 12.01 a.m., which is why this morning the Senate is scheduled to vote on a bill to keep the government funded through early December. It also includes emergency funding for natural disaster relief and to assist in Afghan refugee resettlement. Once the Senate acts, the House is expected to take up the measure. But avoiding a government shutdown before Friday isn't the only thing on lawmakers' to-do list. They also need to lift the debt ceiling before the middle of October. It's a battle being pitched right down party lines. It's the Democrats that want to take on all this debt to pay for all of this massive spending. We're just asking for Republicans to get out of the way. Coming to a compromise on a budget reconciliation package is still a work in progress. The White House sees this as a way to expand the social safety net, addressing everything from tax codes and climate related measures to health care. But the dollar amount is a big sticking point, and some Democrats say until that deal is done, they won't vote yes on a bipartisan infrastructure bill, though the House is scheduled to vote on the matter as soon as today. It would mean more than $1 trillion to fix roads and bridges across the country, plus a slew of other projects. Clearly, a lot of work to be done in D.C. in the face of deadlines and drama. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The International Olympic Committee says spectators will be allowed at the 2022 Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. However, only people who live in mainland China will be able to get tickets. The IOC says COVID-19 vaccinated athletes and game participants will immediately enter a, quote, closed loop management system and will not have to quarantine. Those not fully vaccinated will have to wait 21 days. Athletes with medical exemptions will be considered on a case by case basis. The FAA has ended its safety investigation into Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson's short voyage to space this summer. The agency is clearing the space tourism company for flight after grounding it while the probe was underway. The probe started after the FAA determined that the vehicle flew outside its FAA designated airspace for nearly two minutes. Virgin had to make some changes to flight procedures and protocols for how it communicates with the FAA during flights. Virgin Galactic CEO says the first flight with paying customers on board is tentatively scheduled for as early as mid-October. Right now, back here on Earth, 538, about 75 degrees. And still ahead, we'll tell you why the price of bacon is higher now than it's been in the past four decades. And next, to ban on evictions ending this week. What you need to know about that change. And taking a look outside with the live cam, a little break from the rain right now, but we will prepare for it because it will be here later today. We'll be right back.
541. It is the end of the month, and that means the national eviction ban is being lifted, impacting millions of renters. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, it's happening after only a small portion of the billions of dollars in federal housing assistance has reached those who need it most. Hello. This time, it's for real. A nationwide ban on evictions coming to an end this week. It was the last remaining protection that was keeping many of these families uh, stably housed during the global health emergency. After the Supreme Court struck down the CDC's eviction moratorium, several states like New York and Illinois and even some parts of California announced plans to extend the ban. The National Low Income Housing Coalition says currently there are roughly six and a half million households behind on rent after losing jobs, work hours and wages during the pandemic. There are estimates that about 40 percent of renters are currently protected by state or citywide eviction moratoriums. But now that safety net is disappearing for millions of tenants like Christina Toscano, who applied for assistance and fears the worst. Being evicted with my child and not having anywhere to go. I just think about my son, like, you know, what am I going to tell him? The National Low Income Housing Coalition says only about 10 million of the $45 billion in aid allocated by Congress has gone out to people in danger of losing the roofs over their heads. Housing advocates say more needs to be done federally, but also on the state and local level as well. Governors and mayors should implement or extend eviction moratoriums at least until all the emergency rental assistance reaches the tenants and landlords who need it. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 543, about 75 degrees. Up next, why items at the Dollar Tree may soon cost you more than a dollar. In your morning consumer headlines, the COVID-19 pandemic still has a strong grip on the food service industry. A survey from the National Restaurant Association says many operators are in worse shape now compared to three months ago. Nearly 80% of those surveyed say they've seen sales drop over the past few weeks. Most res restaurants also say they're struggling with staffing and supply shortages. The association is calling on Congress to add to the $28.6 billion restaurant revitalization fund. It estimates roughly 90,000 restaurants have gone out of business since the start of the pandemic. You're going to have to work a bit harder to bring home the bacon. The price of the beloved cured pork product higher than it's been in the last 40 years. The average price of bacon nearly 30% higher than it was just a year ago. Pork chops are up about 7 percent. America's pork supply chain was one of the first to get slammed by coronavirus shutdowns. The Biden administration is blaming the cost hikes on monopolies within the meat industry. It has plans to offer pandemic assistance to small producers, farmers and workers. The Dollar Tree says customers can expect to spend more than a dollar for some of their products. The retailers say it will be adding items to its shelves that cost anywhere from one to five dollars. Dollar Tree says the price increases are because of higher wage and shipping costs. The higher priced products will be in 500 of its locations this year and eventually in additional locations through 2024. Eventually, the Dollar Tree says 5,000 of its stores will have products that cost more than a dollar. I always wondered if stores like Five Below, if mm -hmm. they had to raise their prices, would they change their name to Five Above? Five Above? Well, that's everywhere. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. 547 on your Thursday morning. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, uh, things are looking pretty good. They've been quiet throughout the morning uh, as we take a look at Trans Guy Loop 410 and Jackson Keller. Uh, just a few folks out there right now, so there is obviously still plenty of that time to grab that cup of coffee. We all know we need one at this hour, so uh, but let's take a look and see how things are shaping up around town. 281 at Hildebrand. Still some light traffic in that area as we are getting things going this morning. Uh, very different from yesterday, as we've been saying. Things have been relatively relatively tranquil, as I like to say. I'm stealing that word, Mike. 281 South at 410. Again, just a few people people out there this morning and they're not going to expect any issues if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments because our map shows that it's still pretty green on the screen. Obviously something that we like to see here. Uh, that means a smooth commute for you at least at this hour. And if one of the destination spots is going to be the gas station, well, we got those gas prices from AAA right now. Uh, take a look on your screen. Average gas price in Bear County, according to AAA, is 273 around the state. We're looking at 280.
1992 and the country still at 318. Now these numbers tend to see a dip uh, around this time of the year because of the fall, but uh, these actually represent summertime levels. According to AAA, that is because uh, there is at least 16% of crude oil production that's been impacted in the Gulf of Mexico following hurricanes Ida and Nicholas. So we'll be watching these gas prices closely as well as the roads here, but thankfully they have been pretty quiet so far. 1604 pretty lonesome out there, but we're going to be getting the morning going and keeping you updated on the roads guys. That's good news. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. You know what, Mike? No, it's never gets old. Old Gory flapping in the blue breeze. <laughs> Amen to that beautiful picture and those blue skies in behind it. Thank you for the picture, Yvonne. And uh, this was obviously on the heels of all the heavy rain that we had Tuesday night into yesterday morning. Then the atmosphere sort of got worked over because of that, and that's why everything was very tranquil in day during the day, I should say, and uh, those beautiful blue skies. So that's what may or may not be the situation tomorrow, obviously dependent upon what's going to happen tonight. Here's what's going on right now. It is uh, pretty quiet out there. Lots of clouds, lots of humidity. Nothing is showing up on radar. That's some clutter around the radar site there, but down to the southeast, we've got these couple of showers, and some of these are going to continue to try and work their way further inland throughout the rest of today. So here's the uh, rain that we had yesterday. Some of that, uh, that activity and that low that moved on through here. Then we got sort of sinking air in behind it. The atmosphere got beat up a little bit and then have anything except blue skies. Now we've got another big trough out here to the west of us, and that's what's going to be working its way in here, and that's what's also going to be producing some of the showers and thunderstorms off to the west. So here's one of the long range computer models. This is that one that kind of broad brushes everything and throughout the rest of the today it doesn't have much developing so we'll have about a 30 percent chance for some showers and thunderstorms but as we go into tonight and early tomorrow morning we're looking at more of these or another one of these nighttime storm complexes to develop some potentially heavy rain now this one still has rain around then throughout the evening hours going into saturday and more potentially heavy rain on saturday but again if we get a big round of really, really heavy storms tonight that could then kind of work over the atmosphere and we wouldn't have as much during the day tomorrow. But still, it's going to be a, obviously a wait and see situation as far as what's going to happen tomorrow. And then, of course, tomorrow night with all the, the football games around here. We have more uh, rain around on Saturday then. A couple of leftover showers early Sunday. Then things are going to start to clear out. And there is the chance for some of those storms later on tonight to be on the strong to severe side. And that's in our western counties. And then that actually gets bumped up to a slight risk one notch up on the uh, the scale there out in western Valverde County. Now going into well, first of all, as far as rainfall totals, estimates are one to two inches down to the southeast could see some very heavy downpours once again, like we saw the other night, three to five inches in portions of the hill country. The problem or the difference being We've got the ground already saturated, so runoff and potential flooding is definitely going to be a threat, especially tonight, tomorrow, and then going into Saturday. Now, here's some encouraging news. Dew point temperatures remain high over the weekend, but we will have a front moving on through here. It won't really cool us down that much, but we're going to get some drier air coming in here for next week, so it should be uh, fairly pleasant and some lower low temperatures then next week. 85 degrees at noon today. Most of the cloudy skies will continue to see a couple of those showers, especially to the southeast. They'll continue to move on in here. So about a 30% chance for some showers and thunderstorms later on today. 90 high temperature heat index will be up toward the mid 90s because of the humidity and then showers and thunderstorms tonight and maybe some heavy downpours. We'll still be on the lookout throughout the day tomorrow and then tomorrow night into Saturday for more potentially heavy rain. And again, with the ground saturated, it's going to be runoff that we have to watch out for. Maybe some uh, flooding cooler tomorrow and Saturday and then back into the mid to upper 80s, close to normal by next week. But drier air comes in here next week. Yeah, on paper, it's looking like a pretty good work week next week. Weather wise, mm -hmm. we could use cooler air in my opinion, but <laughs> at, yeah. least it, at least we're going to have some drier air coming in here starting off the week. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I like your opinion. Oh, thank you. Yes, no problem, Mike. Did you hear that? I did. Okay. Yes, I, I agree too. 553, about 75 degrees. <laughs> Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3075, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 8355, Fireball 4. Your cash five numbers, 37, 14, 18, 34. Lotto Texas, 15, 18, 21, 22, 31, 32. 
And taking a look at Powerball right now, looks like Powerball jackpot, $620 million for Saturday night. Last numbers drawn were 2, 7, 11, 17, 32, Powerball 11, Power Play 3. Coming up on GMA, the all or nothing showdown on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers saying they've reached a deal to avert a government shutdown, but President Biden's agenda is still on the line as divided Democrats fail to reach a deal. We have the latest from the Hill. That plus a follow up here in Louisiana on Hurricane Ida, all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. Tomorrow, new month, and it's October. That means several corn mazes are set to open this weekend here in San Antonio. Three of them over at Traders Village with one specifically designed for little kids. Altogether, those mazes take up 10 acres. Tickets include access to a pumpkin patch and a petting zoo. All those details are online at ksat.com. Still ahead on GMSA, looking for work. One of the nation's largest retailers is hiring. We'll have those details. A lot of the latest on an overnight apartment fire broke out just north of downtown. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. Trans guide right now. Let's see how things are looking right now. Live at Highway 90 and Localito. Slight traffic out there so far. I'm sure it's heavier on some of the major interstates. 281 at 410. Stephen Cavazos is back with an update here at the top of the hour. A big battle for the Biden agenda playing out on Capitol Hill today. Lawmakers spending last night negotiating on a baseball diamond. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting off humid at about 75 degrees. Uh, but that's okay. The payoff will come later today. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, September 30th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you've had a great week so far. And, you know, we needed the rain, and now it's here. That's right. We've got more rain in the forecast. It's not here at the moment, but it could be here by this time tomorrow morning. So says Mike Oster. Yeah, there are a lot of indications that we're going to see a repeat tomorrow morning of what we had yesterday morning. And the problem or the difference being, yeah, we got a lot of rain. There was some, you know, runoff, some minor flooding, but now the ground's pretty well saturated. So we get more rain and some folks could see another, you know, two, three, four inches of rain and then heavier pockets on top of that. So runoff and flooding is definitely going to be a concern even going through uh, most of the day on Saturday. Right now it is pretty tranquil out there. I saw a little bit of mist on the windshield this morning, so don't be surprised if you see some of that. 74 here in town, 79 at Stinson, and even upper 60s, low 70s in parts of the hill country. A lot of humidity when you get these numbers, dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, upper 60s, low to mid 70s. That's kind of fog up your glasses sort of humidity there around Randolph, Stinson, Pleasanton, Castroville, and it's going to stay fairly humid, but all Again, all this moisture is going to be feeding some of those showers. We've got a, well, just some clutter on the radar sites uh, here in town. Maybe a little notice you blink and you miss some of those sprinkles. And then a few more showers down here along the coast. Those will continue to develop and work their way further inland throughout the day and the afternoon. And then we'll have some of those showers and thunderstorms developing way out there to the west. And they'll be working their way across like the situation we had Tuesday night. Mold is high. Fall oil moderate. Ragweed is low. Mold's going to be staying on the high side for the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to be steady throughout the rest of the morning. And uh, again, some mist here and there. And then we'll see a few, of those, few more of those showers along the coastal plain throughout the morning hours. We'll make it up to 85 at noon. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms this afternoon. High temperature of the 90, so it is going to be warm and humid. And then more rain tonight. Still have the threat for rain throughout the day tomorrow. And then also on Saturday, it will come to an end though. How much can we expect? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Didn't stay quiet for too long. We had a good trend going there, but as evidence right behind me, we do have a uh, some flashing lights out there, obviously indicating some trouble on the roadways. This is at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. You can see it's off on the shoulder lane. What we're looking at right now is a stalled vehicle, and it appears that one of those TxDOT Hero trucks is assisting that driver there. And from what we can make right now from this shot, looks like there's also a road flare indicating uh, drivers should move over and of course make sure that they're slowing down when you see those flashing lights out there. Let's go ahead and take you to the map. 
show you exactly where that's taking place. It looks like again those eastbound lanes 410 right at Jack Vance Jackson Road. So make sure that you are driving with caution this morning. Uh, this is not the only issue that we've spotted so far right now. If we're going to take another jump right here off Southwest Loop 410 at US 90 eastbound, the San Antonio fire page has listed a crash in that area. Uh, right now, the Texas website has not listed it just yet, but take a look right there on 410. We're starting to see some buildup of traffic out there. We're going to be watching this closely and see how that develops throughout the morning and if that's going to be impacting your morning drive. But as we take a wider look at the map, thankfully things are still pretty green. We're seeing that throughout Loop 410 and 1604, even coming in from 35 I 10. No big issues at this hour. So let's take you to those inbound times that can show you if you're going to be traveling to San Antonio. Pretty pleasant from Pleasanton. 37 minutes right now or thir on 37 with 28 minutes. 16 minutes coming in from 35 and Lytle. And if you're coming in from Highway 90, just 19 minutes uh, coming in from Castroville. But one last look here at Trans got a wider look where we can see that traffic is starting to get moving out there off Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Just make sure that you move over and slow down for those first responders. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked an apartment fire last night just north of downtown. It happened around 1015 in the 300 block of West Laurel, and that's where crews say a fire broke out in a wall between the first and second floor of the apartment building. Crews were able to put out the flames quickly and no one was hurt. People who lived in three apartment units were displaced last night. Still no word on the cause. Also new this morning, two people in the hospital following a head-on crash on the northwest side. It happened just before midnight at Prue Road and Kyle Seal Parkway, east of Bandera Road. San Antonio police say two drivers were speeding and may have been racing. One of those drivers was in the wrong lane when they collided with another vehicle head-on. The two people involved in the crash were taken to hospitals with serious injuries. San Antonio City Council members are now discussing the largest ever bond program. The five-year program is expected to come in at $1.2 billion. City staff presented the council with six possible areas where the money could be used, things like streets, municipal facilities, and parks. A new voter-approved charter change would also allow the money to be used for housing units. The city wants to preserve and produce more than 28,000 housing units over the next 10 years. The bond project would need to be set before the May election when voters will decide on it. 6.05 right now, big day today on Capitol Hill for President Biden and his agenda. Tense, nonstop negotiations continue over both his infrastructure bill and a separate so-called human infrastructure bill. All of this as a government shutdown looms. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Good morning. Yes, today could be a decisive day for the Biden agenda on Capitol Hill. And the president, well aware, spent last night drumming up support at a baseball game. The first offerings. Intense negotiations during last night's congressional baseball game, just hours before a potential government shutdown and a crucial infrastructure bill vote. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in the dugout on the phone, and President Biden seen visiting with Democrats and Republicans. The game, a warm up for the big showdown later today. Lawmakers expected to first vote on funding to avoid a government shutdown. They reached a deal overnight and will vote today. That will supply the, 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 the result that we all expect, which is to keep the lights on. The House also scheduled to vote on President Biden's $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package. It's already passed the Senate and would create an estimated 500,000 jobs, rebuild the nation's roads and bridges, and expand rural broadband internet. I'm a hard no tomorrow. <laughs> I'm an absolute no. House progressives threatening to vote no unless Congress passes a separate three and a half trillion dollar package covering everything from early childhood education to funding for efforts to combat climate change. Uh, well, we take it one step at a time. Progressives are frustrated at two moderate senators who won't support the larger package. There's also the looming fight over the debt limit. If Congress doesn't act soon to either suspend it or raise it by October 18th, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warns the U.S. could face a recession and possible financial crisis. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Walmart is looking for workers. The country's largest private employer says it needs about 150,000 more people. While some of the jobs are seasonal, Walmart says most of the positions we offered as long-term jobs in stores. Another car maker is going all electric. Rolls-Royce now says by 2030 it will only produce electric cars. Testing is set to start soon on its first electric model, and the company plans to have it on the road in late 2023. 
By now, 607, about 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll show you some local restaurants who got perfect scores on their recent health inspections. And get ready for snail mail. More of it after the break. We'll tell you why a postal slowdown is expected. Taking a look outside with live cam, getting a little break from the rain this morning. Uh, but expecting more tomorrow and possibly this weekend. We'll be checking in with Mike soon. And welcome back. It's about 6:11. Google is offering new search tools to make shopping from home easier. Users will soon have use of a button on Google Lens to find products in almost any picture posted online. Google says it will be similar to the experience of browsing in a brick and mortar store. And some changes are coming in the mail. ABC's Andrea Fuji explains that a slowdown is on the way. They already call mail snail mail. Snail mail is about to get slower. Beginning tomorrow, the Postal Service will adopt new standards that will delay delivery times for some mail. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy previously announced the changes to save billions of dollars. We are not structured properly, and we have fallen out of step with the marketplace we serve. The changes mean some first-class mail, along with magazines, flyers, and other periodicals, will arrive later, especially if traveling a long distance. The current one- to three-day delivery service will lengthen to one to five days. Add to that the current pandemic-related delivery delays, and critics aren't happy. Medical shipments have gone missing. Many small businesses cannot get their products to customers and people are getting hit with late fees for bill payments that did not arrive on time because of mail delivery delays. Under this new plan, first class package deliveries are not expected to be affected. They include most medications and food deliveries. But beginning this Sunday, it will cost you more to send commercial and retail packages. The higher prices are expected to last through Christmas. The mail is already slow, that is slowed up worse. A lot of people depend on the mail, a lot of people need the mail. So I think that'll be not a good thing. Some post offices will also see reduced hours. Postmaster General DeJoy, a Trump appointee, has already come under fire for slower mail delivery around the election and during the holiday season last year. But supporters are praising his plans to upgrade mail processing equipment and technology, even with the Postal Service mired in $161 billion in debt. As for the changes taking effect tomorrow, people sending first class mail are being warned to plan ahead. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Well, right here on GMSA, we run perfect restaurant scores all the time, and I usually end it asking if your place got a perfect score to let us know so we could share it on the air. And we finally got one recently. The owner of the Quiznos at 6408 Callahan Road, very proud of his staff. They received a perfect score on their most recent health inspection. Congratulations. Moving along, First Watch, they specialize in breakfast and lunch only. Perfect score at 830 Northwest Loop 410. Stop on by there. Pizza Hut in the 15,000 block of Jones Maltzberger also aced their most recent inspection with Metro Health. And also on our list this week, Groomers Seafood at 9801 McCullough Avenue. They have a lot going on there, a whole bunch of uh, product uh, that has to be maintained temperature wise. They also got a perfect score. Steph, I recently saw a picture from inside Groomers. They're selling fishing poles now. I think there's poetic irony in there oh. somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> that there's seafood place all selling in, right, poles. But yeah, all, but all in one. All in one. That's right. Yep. Well, congratulations to groomers. Uh, great business here in San Antonio. If your place got a great score, let us know. Send me an email. That also goes to Dylan Collier, by the way. BKD at KSAT.com. Let's check traffic at 615. Here is Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I'm just hungry now, Mark. I mean, just You're welcome. All that. <laughs> Thanks for all of that. Uh, you know, we got uh, some issues out there on the roads. Uh, we want to bring you this shot at US 90 at 410. Uh, we saw some flashing lights out there a little bit earlier and we did tell you about a crash that was detected in that area. I actually stepped out of the studio to call our friends at Transguide. Uh, they tell us that they did see some flashing lights out there as well. Unfortunately, there's no camera to show us exactly where that crash did happen. But right now uh, that was detected at now Southwest Loop, Southwest Loop 410. That is at US 90 eastbound. So as always, make sure you're driving with caution whenever you see those flashing lights. It is picking up to be a morning of stalls. We're going to jump around and show you
really where, where things are happening. Loop 410 eastbound Advanced Jackson Road. A stall still detected out there. And as we take another jump right over here to 281 northbound at St. Mary Street, another stall right over there, guys. And let's take one last look over here off I-35 northbound at the Eisenhower intersection. Another stall vehicle. As always, as you know, make sure you check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways, especially when it's still pretty dark outside. It's not a good place to be on the highway when you're experiencing car trouble. So again, check those vehicles before you get on the road. But one last look here at US 90 at 410. A traffic picking up a little bit here, but thankfully nothing too big right now to, that's going to cause any delays. Mark Stephanie. Thank yes. you, Stephen. Looks good compared to yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I guess heavy rain again, possibly tomorrow morning. Yes, there there is that chance. Now, some computer models may be leaning a little bit uh, against that, having the, the real widespread heavy, heavy rain tomorrow morning. We'll still have some, but, you know, this is one of those situations where if these things do get going, they hold together overnight, but then sometimes they just don't materialize. However, we will still continue to have rain, uh, at least the chance of it in through Saturday and even early Sunday morning. Temperatures are about uh, anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal right now. We're in the mid 70s here in town. There are a couple of showers down to the southeast and even a uh, sprinkle of mist here or there had some on the windshield this morning 90 high temperature today partly cloudy a few stray showers and thunderstorms about a 30 percent chance for some rain to pop up later on today and speaking of rain i mean a lot of folks have been sending in pictures of rain gauges and got yes some beautiful rain i mean it, it was just coming down literally in buckets in some areas four and a quarter inches of rain in this rain gauge and that's going to be added too and the problem being now the ground is saturated. If we get these heavy downpours, obviously it's just going to be uh, running off instead of soaking in. So flooding is going to be definitely a concern over the next couple of days. All right, this is what it looks like on radar. Nothing. Um, even a couple, you blink, you miss a couple of these little sprinkles that were heavy enough to be picked up. Here are a few showers down here along the coast. These will sort of work their way further inland throughout the day. So here's another uh, computer model, and this one has, again, a few scattered showers around the area throughout the uh, afternoon hours and then even going into this evening. However, it's not, it, it does try and get this line developing out there to the west, but it's not as, as bullish or aggressive with that coming in here by tomorrow morning. What it does do, though, is keep the showers and thunderstorms around in through the afternoon hours into tomorrow night and overnight into Saturday. So again, it's one of the situations where if we get all the heavy rain and the, the big, big thunderstorms overnight early tomorrow morning, it could kind of put a you know, ease up on things throughout the afternoon or the opposite scenario. So this will definitely be something that we have to watch whether it develops or not. There is the chance out there to the west for some of those storms to become strong, potentially severe. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. And again, we could be, you know, over the next couple of days through Sunday morning, looking at another couple of inches or even three to five inches of rain in portions of the, uh, the hill country. Again, the good news is next week we are going to start to see there is a front moving through here. It won't really cool us down that much, but we will get some drier air moving on in here next week. But until then, it's going to remain very humid, and that's going to be feeding potentially some heavy rain. So mostly cloudy skies, 85 degrees at noon. A couple of those showers down along the coastal plain will continue to try and work their way further in here. we got about a 30% chance for some rain, showers and thunderstorms later on today. And then tonight, there is the threat for some of those showers and storms to work their way across the area overnight and then tomorrow throughout the day and then Saturday more rain around here um, few leftover showers on Sunday then we'll start to clear out and we get that drier air moving in for the, <coughs> the first of next week pardon me so again this evening is going to be one of the situations where you just got to keep watching sure. you know and more data comes in later on in the afternoon so you know see what the uh, adam has to say later on this evening as it, well it might happen but it might not yeah you know and, and again computer models mm -hmm. can go back not everybody's really sold on this right now so well, you said some of the ingredients are there mm -hmm. so oh, it's yeah, just a matter of uh, whether the, the whether, the whether they, they form up yeah, yeah okay. either way uh wet ground so right. i see football night probably right <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 620, about 74 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, scientists are getting a closer look at ancient Egyptians. Details after the break. Let's create your trademark style at Macy's VIP sale with an extra 30% off top designers, plus 15% off fragrances, skincare, makeup, and more. Now at Macy's. New Meow Mix Tasty Layers. Meow. 
crunchy and meaty textures with a mouth-watering gravy coating. Meow Mix Tasty Layers, the new one cats ask for by name. We do it every night. Like clockwork. Do it. Run your dishwasher with Cascade Platinum and save water. Did you know certified dishwashers use less than four gallons per cycle while a running sink uses that every two minutes? So do it with Cascade, the surprising way to save water. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nariva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nariva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance, yes please. Nariva, think bigger. In this morning's GMA First Look, celebrations from across the Free Britney movement. After more than 13 years, a Los Angeles judge ending Jamie Spears' control over his daughter's life, suspending him as her conservator effective immediately. Britney Spears has been faced with a decade-long nightmare, a Kafkaesque nightmare, orchestrated by her father and others. And she's so pleased and she's so thankful to all of you. But the court didn't go so far as to dissolve the conservatorship completely, at least not just yet. Instead, appointing a temporary conservator recommended by Britney's legal team to replace Jamie. Britney's attorney asking the judge for an orderly transition, then termination of the conservatorship entirely later this fall. And we'll be live outside the courthouse with the very latest coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Check out these new digital renderings. New technology is giving scientists a glimpse into what ancient Egyptians really looked like. A company is using DNA from actual mummies in a process called phenotyping, which predicts someone's physical characteristics based on genetic data. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Time now, 625, and it's about 74 degrees out there. And our next half hour, YouTube widening its ban on misinformation to all vaccines, not just COVID shots. We have new details. And a quick look at the roads with Transguy this morning. There's a look there at Highway 90 at Loop 410. Things are looking pretty good this morning, and we'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. What at the very least may have been reckless driving has sent two people to the hospital. Police actually believe it was a street race. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll tell you more about it. Trinity University receiving its largest donation in its history. Learn from who and how much coming up next. Outside with Lycamp, very humid, 74 degrees at San Antonio International. Uh, we may not be done with the storms quite yet, but out there right now, nothing. Good morning to you. We're about to wrap up the month of September. It is Thursday the 30th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us this morning. So yeah, this morning we have a little break from the rain, but not the humidity. It's live and well. And yeah. Mike is thinking by this time tomorrow morning, we may be dealing with another round of showers and storms. There is that possibility. Mm -hmm. It is not written in stone, but um, first of all, this morning, did you, you said you ran into a little bit of mist? Very briefly yeah. on Highway 281 near the airport. Kind of like going past it going, is that, yeah, you know, going, saw it on only in the street lights pretty much so. But um, yeah, so don't be surprised if there is a little bit of mist, but that's pretty much it out there right now. Other than that, as uh, we were just talking about, it is warm, it is humid. And we've got temperatures that are almost 10 degrees above normal. Should be right around mid 60s right now. We're at 74, and that number, measure of moisture in the atmosphere, is up into the 70s. And yep, that's when it gets really humid. So here's radar. Uh, this is some clutter around the radar site. There have been a few little speckles showing up here and there. A few more of these showers down along the coast. That's pretty much it. Some of these that moved on in sort of fizzle on out, but we will see more of this moving into the west, into the northwest throughout the rest of uh, even this morning and then this afternoon. That will help with some of these uh, scattered showers and storms. Mold is high and it's probably going to remain very high for the next couple of days. Fall down moderate ragweed is on the low side. So warm and humid again. Um, those showers southeast, maybe some mist here and there. And then this afternoon, a few stray storms. It is going to be warm. We'll be up around 90 with the humidity. It'll feel like the low to mid 90s. And then tonight and tomorrow, there is that chance for uh, some of those 
thunderstorms to develop out to the west, although not all computer models right now are really in agreement with that, but that is definitely a threat and uh, heavy rain. And it's not going to take much with the ground so saturated because, you know, there were a lot of two, three, four, five inch rainfall amounts from Tuesday night into yesterday morning. And then we'll still be dealing with some rain overnight into Saturday throughout the day, ending early Sunday. We'll start to clear out next week and we get some lower humidity coming on in here. We'll talk more about those rain chances in just a couple of minutes. It's right now, traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, and last hit, you had some flashing lights out there. Yeah, we had a little bit of flashing lights. Some of those Texas Hero trucks working to assist some drivers, having some car trouble out on the road. Uh, I was just taking a look at some of those monitors that we have out there from TransGuide, as showing us how things are shaping up right now. Already starting to see some school buses out there, and we are inching closer to that morning rush. Uh, things are definitely picking up there at 37. Even here at Jones Avenue, we're starting to see traffic build a little bit more. Again, we know more people are getting out on the roadway, but if you're still at home, let's take a look at what you can expect out there right now. Uh, we do have a stalled vehicle off 281 northbound at St. Mary Street. Thankfully, still early where we're not seeing any issues. Uh, but as we take a jump over here to Loop 410 at northbound at Old Pearsall, we do have another stalled vehicle reported out there as well. There was a crash detected out there a little bit earlier this morning, uh, but it does look like that has since cleared out. And as we take a wider look at the map, it is still pretty green on the screen, so some good news there, but stalls right now seem to be that trending issue. Some of them tend to pop up and then clear out right away. But if you're experiencing any trouble uh, with your car and it's you're still at home, make sure that you find an alternative uh, way of transportation because again, you don't want to experience any trouble out there on the highways, especially when it's going to start to get pretty busy here in the next few moments. Uh, but as we take a look at these inbound times, if you're traveling into San Antonio, it's still pretty green across the board. So that's some good news there. You're not going to experience any delays at this hour, but let's bring it back to TransGuide one last time. 35 at Evans. So it looks pretty good right now, but we're going to be watching things closely and give you all the updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, what may have been a late night street race has turned into a morning in the hospital for one driver. That person and a second driver were hurt in a head on crash. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Prue Road near Kyle Steel Parkway. And Katrina, we understand it sees one of the injured people happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. The police say that person was in a car just driving here along Prue Road when it was hit head on by one of those cars they believe was involved in the race. Now, both of the injured people were in serious condition as they were taken to a hospital. San Antonio police say witnesses told them they saw two cars side by side on a two lane stretch of Prue Road traveling at a high rate of speed. One of those cars was going the wrong way in the lane and hit head on with another uninvolved car here near Kyle C Seal Parkway. That happened just before midnight. One person in each of those cars was hurt. But it appears the other driver, who they believe was racing, took off. You can see here where police had uh, flares out here blocking off the road. And it seems that they are still investigating this crash. They have not mentioned anything just yet about anyone facing charges. Reporting live on the far northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Lots of questions remain following a shooting incident on the west side. This unfolding around 1230 this morning in the 2900 block of West Salinas near Zorz, North Zarzamora. San Antonio police are getting conflicting statements from witnesses, but they say two men were shot in the leg and taken to the hospital. And we know two people were held in connection to the case. We'll bring you an update on this story as more information becomes available. San Antonio police have their suspect after a fight between two teenagers turned into gunfire. The shootout sent an innocent bystander to the hospital with a gunshot wound. San Antonio police were called to the 1800 block of South General McMullen for a shooting last week, and that's where a witness told police he was sitting in the McDonald's parking lot when he noticed two cars speed past him. They both stopped and a person in one of the cars started shooting. Police say that person was 17 year old Damian Yeager. The witness was hit in the shoulder. He is expected to survive. Yeager now faces multiple charges of assault with a deadly weapon. He's being held on a $55,000 bond. In Dallas, authorities say eight people were hurt, including four firefighters at an apartment complex explosion. Dallas Fire and Rescue says three firefighters were badly hurt yesterday while the other was treated for minor injuries. Fire officials say the firefighters were investigating a report of a natural gas leak at the two story complex in South Dallas. They had reported smelling gas just before the explosion partially collapsed that building. New this morning in France, former French President Nicolas Sarkozy has been convicted and sentenced to a year of house arrest for illegal campaign financing of his unsuccessful 2012 re-election bid. 
He was accused of having spent almost twice the maximum legal amount on the reelection bid that he lost to socialist Francois Hollande. Sarkozy has denied wrongdoing and has the possibility to appeal the decision, which would suspend the sentence. The French court says it will allow him to serve the sentence at home by wearing an electronic monitoring bracelet. And we have the latest in the Gabby Petito case. The 22-year-old woman was found murdered in Wyoming. FBI agents are still searching for her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. And now we've learned about new evidence in their possession. ABC's Andrew Dembert has more. This morning, new evidence revealed in the search for Brian Laundrie. Surveillance video from a park where Laundrie went camping earlier this month has now been turned over to the FBI. Authorities say Brian went to the campsite with his parents, not far from their Florida home, after he returned from a cross-country trip without his fiancée, Gabby Petito. And ABC News now confirms the FBI has obtained surveillance video from an AT&T store where Brian purchased a cell phone on September 4th, three days after returning home to Florida. The Laundry's family attorney says Brian left that phone at home on September 14th when he went for a hike, the last time he was seen. The FBI also in possession of that phone. I would not want to be... Brian right now because if he's out here we're going to find him. And joining the manhunt, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Wednesday night, the TV personality was seen with canines searching an island not far from the Laundry's campsite. We found nothing to suggest that he was out there recently. But this is how you hunt. Brian has not been charged in Petito's death, only named a person of interest in the case. It comes as more protesters gather outside the Laundry family home, demanding answers from Brian's parents regarding his whereabouts. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. U.S. Senate and House poised to approve legislation today that would keep the federal government running into early December. Today, lawmakers are also set to vote on the president's widely touted $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. But that vote may be postponed without a deal on a larger $3.5 trillion measure for social programs. There's also a fight over the nation's debt limit. If not raised by October 18th, the country would likely face a financial crisis and economic recession. And new this morning, big news for Trinity University. They have received a massive donation. Jonathan Cotto is live with the details. And Jonathan, just how big is that donation? Good morning, Stephanie. It is big. Listen to this, $25 million, and it's the largest donation in the university's history. The money is coming from Michael Nadorf and the Nadorf Family Trust. And the money will be going towards their school of business. That business school has officially been renamed the Michael Nadorf School of Business. The donation will provide scholarships, improved teaching, and new facilities. University leaders say the money will have a big impact. This money could bring changes to the school's centuries-old business building. If people say it's time to renovate, we in the School of Business say it's time for us to transform our School of Business into a modern, contemporary state-of-the-art facility. So we're going to keep the best of the historic traditions, the historic context of the building, uh, but the internal pieces and parts will be uh, brought up to speed. Trinity's president says this will bring many new opportunities for those pursuing business degrees as well as those taking business classes. For more on this story, you can head on over to ksat.com. Reporting from Trinity University, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning on KSAT.com, United Airlines is currently in the process of firing close to 600 employees for not being vaccinated. According to the company mandate, they had until Monday to get the vaccine. In a company memo from the airline CEO, they said that it was a tough decision, but keeping the team safe is priority. 99% of their U.S.-based employees have been vaccinated. When it comes to COVID vaccine boosters, many people are wondering if they are still fully vaccinated without the booster, and the answer is yes. The CDC says those who got a two-dose vaccine or the single-dose Johnson & Johnson shot are considered fully vaccinated. Boosters are recommended for high-risk people who got their Pfizer shots at least six months ago. Those who got the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines are not eligible for boosters yet, but that's likely coming soon. We have a complete breakdown on KSET.com. And YouTube is broadening its ban on misinformation about vaccines. YouTube says it will now remove anti-vaccine content containing false claims about all vaccines, not just the COVID shots. 
popular anti-vax influencers, have, uh, influencers rather, have already been booted from the site as part of their crackdown. And time now is 640 and it's about 74 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you why a well-known religious leader was held hostage in his office for hours right here in San Antonio. It was big breaking news on KSAT many, many years ago. And welcome back at 644. He was a beloved San Antonio religious leader held hostage for hours inside his office by a man who needed help with his passport. That's right. In today's episode of South Texas Crime Stories, Eric Hernandez shares details of what happened to the archbishop during that standoff. In June of 2000, the state's top-ranking Roman Catholic clergyman, along with his secretary, held hostage for hours inside the Catholic Chancery right here in San Antonio. According to the Associated Press, 40-year-old Nelson Antonio Escolero, an unemployed man from El Salvador, went to visit Archbishop Patrick Flores. San Antonio police say Escolero was upset with the government over his possible deportation for driving with a suspended license, and he believed Flores could help him. That's when police say he took the archbishop hostage in his office, threatening to kill him because, quote, he had a lot of power. That standoff with police lasted for a total of nine hours. The archbishop's secretary, Myrtle Sanchez, was set free unharmed after about three hours. Sanchez told police at one point a grenade-like device was used to threaten Flores, but it turned out to be fake. Its pin was actually just a paper clip. Bishop Flores was eventually released unharmed as well. As for Escolero, he was ultimately convicted of two counts of aggravated kidnapping and sentenced to 65 years in prison. Flores passed away at 87 years old in 2017. He was the first Mexican-American Catholic bishop in the country. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right now, 646. And at last check at the Trans Guide cameras, it looks like things are moving, Stephen. They're moving, and a lot of the problems that we spotted a little bit earlier have thankfully resolved. You can take a look right now. US 90 at 410. Uh, things are definitely definitely moving, as Steph just mentioned. 35 at New Braunfels, picking up in some spots. Uh, so quiet in other areas. Definitely picking up there of 37 at Fair Avenue. Uh, let's go ahead and take you to the map, though, and talk about some of the things that we are still spotting out there. Uh, that stalled vehicle off 281 northbound at St. Mary Street had been there for quite a while, so it could possibly be abandoned, but either which way, make sure that you're moving over when you see a vehicle over in the shoulder lane that looks like it's having any trouble. Uh, but things will be aware of ahead of tonight. We are going to be seeing some bridge work happening out there from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. This is going to be happening right at Graytown Road at Loop 1604 uh, near the Seguin area, or closer to the Seguin area. It's going to lead to a single westbound main lane closure, but that should be wrapping up by tomorrow morning. So let's take a wider look at the map. Right now, you're not going to experience any trouble. We're we're seeing a little bit of a buildup uh, traffic that is starting to get moving, but it's the usual problem spots right now. We know that we're getting closer to that morning rush, and you can take a look just from that shot at US 90 that was just there a few moments ago. Things are definitely moving, but as always, we're we got your back here in the traffic lab, and we'll be watching things throughout the morning. Guys? Thank you very much, Steve. Another be beautiful yeah. picture from Mr. Yeah. McClellan, and yep. great. he could start his own company called McClellan uh, <laughs> Wallpaper Works. <laughs> I yeah. think and so. And always Woodlawn Lake. Sometimes it doesn't look like Woodlawn Lake, but very huh. impressive. Yeah. And he has, you know, different angles and, and mm -hmm. all these different views of downtown or whatever. But, uh, you know, we had a lot of clear skies throughout most of the day. Some clouds moved in later on. Obviously, there were some at uh, sunset. Yes, it was a stunning sunset. Great picture. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, you can almost see it looks a little murky out there this morning. Lots of clouds, lots of humidity. We've had a couple, well, had some mist. That's about it on my windshield this morning. Uh, not much is showing up on radar. I keep pointing out, well, now a few thunderstorms are developing down here along the coast. Some of these that uh, moved on in have fizzled on out, but this is going to continue to push its way inland throughout the day. Now, what's interesting is some computer models, and they do different uh, computer model runs, update every uh, sometimes six hours, every 12 hours, and some are starting to back off a little bit as far as uh, some of the rain overnight. This model in particular, we have a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms today. We still could have a couple of heavy downpours. That, that can't be ruled out. I mean, there's always that chance. You get one of those thunderstorms, and it can come down in buckets. Now, 
this computer model uh, is not as bullish on getting those big thunderstorms to develop out there to the west. It does have some trying to develop, but it does not move them into town tomorrow morning. However, it does keep scattered showers and thunderstorms around then throughout the late afternoon and evening hours tomorrow and then going into Saturday as well. And again, that's just one computer model, but a couple others are sort of leaning in that direction that we wouldn't have quite the, uh, the thunderstorm event tomorrow morning like we had yesterday morning early. Um, Storm Prediction Center still has the marginal and even slight risk for some of those storms to be uh, severe out there to the west with high winds and hail. So that's obviously a threat. Also, um, the uh, prediction as far as the computer model with the storm potential or the potential uh, rain, I should say, total rain through Sunday morning. That's also kind of been dialed back a little bit more. Still one to three inches and then you get those heavier amounts on top of that. And again, this is on top of saturated ground. Uh, so runoff is definitely going to be a problem, but these numbers have definitely come down from what the earlier computer model run looked like. So yes, we will still see some rain, still some heavy downpours scattered in, but maybe not quite as much when it's all said and done as what it had looked like just uh, even yesterday. 85 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies and then a few scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. 90 with humidity, so it'll feel like the low to mid 90s and about a 30% chance for some of those scattered showers and thunderstorms. There is the chance for some of those uh, storms overnight tonight. Uh, and then throughout the day tomorrow and then again on Saturday. And this is going to be one of those situations to, you know, even though right now a computer model is not leaning that direction, you still got to make sure you're watching even later on this evening to see what may or may not develop. But we'll still have rain chances through uh, early Sunday and then we clear out in drier air next week. Okay, well, either way, we will be prepared. Mike. Yes, yep. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. It's about 10 till 74 degrees. And millions of Americans take vitamins and other supplements every day, but do they actually make a difference? We're going to have those details tomorrow on GMSA. The big game in our big game coverage tomorrow night will feature Madison versus Reagan. Both the Mavericks and Rattlers coming to this one undefeated in district with the Mavs at 2-0. And the Rattlers also at... 2-0. Kickoff set Hero Stadium tomorrow night at 7, and our sports crew will be there live at 5 and 6. You can head over to the BGC tab on ksat.com for a preview. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are rain-free, but we are at a humid 74 degrees. We'll be right back. Coming up on GMA, the All or Nothing Showdown on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers saying they've reached a deal to avert a government shutdown, but President Biden's agenda is still on the line as divided Democrats failed to reach a deal. We had the latest from the Hill. That plus a follow up here in Louisiana on Hurricane Ida, all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. Good morning, everyone. Time now is 655. As we take a look right now at our roadways, it's pretty smooth right now, but some things to be on the lookout for as traffic is getting building here in some of these spots. Uh, we do have a stalled vehicle right there of I-35 northbound at Topper Wine, where you can see a little bit of a build up there in that area. And we take another jump right over here to I-35 northbound at US 90, another stalled vehicle. It has been one of those mornings. It was tra tranquil at first use, Mike's word, but things have been picking up. And we know now that we're in the morning rush, you're going to want to make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of time this morning to get where you need to be on time and safely. Mike? Mostly dry roads out there. I did see a little bit of mist earlier this morning, but uh, really haven't seen much since then and uh, it is warm. It's humid out there. We got a couple of showers down along the, the coastal plain. Some of those will continue to work their way further inland over the course of late morning and this afternoon. 75 degrees right now. Yep, it is warm. It is humid. Going to stay pretty humid throughout the day. 90 for a high temperature. A couple of stray uh, showers and thunderstorms around here. We'll keep our eye out for overnight storms, but we'll still keep rain chances in the picture tomorrow and through Saturday and early Sunday and then we we'll clear out after that. Fair enough. Thank you, Mike. We'll watch out for it. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next on KSAT 12.